just I'm at the airport just waiting for my flight to come. It's just going to be a wonderful time. And of course, I'm on my way to New York. You know, I am excited about this. Got picked up by my brother-in-law, wonderful person indeed. And just we just started talking, making connections, talking about things and taking in the scenery as it relates to New York and talking about the politics here and there, not much. And went back to his place and just settled in for the night. Yeah, I've arrived in the location that I'm going to be talking this morning. Yes, I'm wearing my knapsack to just make sure I can carry everything, my laptop and so forth. And I'll be talking about AI as it relates to inclusivity and, of course, from an educational leadership perspective. I'm going to touch on the need for AI and inclusion, and I'm going to be touching on some of these points. I'll give you an overview of the presentation. I just wanted to give a shot as it relates to New York and what am I doing here? I arrived a bit early. They stated that they're at a school doing some review or just taking a tour. So I'm just going to walk around a bit, get something to eat, have a coffee or something, and then get ready for my presentation. But, you know, this place brings back memory to me, of course. I think in line with where I've been before. As a matter of fact, I would say that I came to this location at this particular school roughly three decades ago and I was asked to do something. Today, I'm doing something but not at the level that I was asked to do because that was in my early days. So I'm glad to be back and I think that's so important. But I just wanted to take you to a place that I've walked before back in 1995. I was in this area and it brings back memory and also brings back that with hard work, you can conquer so many things and you have to be consistent. A lot of people have asked me, how do I do the things I do? Consistency. I set my own management time out of my regular work hours. And many times, while many people sleep, I am making content. You know, so they have a saying that the heights of great men and women, rich and kept, were not attained by sudden flight. But they, while their companions slept, were toiling upward through the night. And of course, my life reflects that many times. Oh, and here we are at the Dalton School, of course. It's right across there. And I remember practically being there a couple of years ago. Yeah, a couple of years ago. And that's the place I'm going, as a matter of fact. Let me do a shot over. And there it is at the Dalton School. It's important that um, I get something to eat before. Let me see if they have any food place of their own here. I love to sit down and enjoy a coffee or do something that I can really enjoy. Look at this place. Nice place. You could sit down and have something, but I don't want anything too sweet. So I'm just looking around and see what they have at this point. You know, could go there, could go down there, but now I know my access. I'm very comfortable. Look at beef cheesecake. I should have one of that, but no, can't have any of that. Yeah, so the bottom line New York is, at the end of this, I'll do roughly eight presentations for this month. And people say, are you tired? But you know what? I did ask God to present me with opportunities to speak. And I got this. And I got these opportunities and I'm just taking it. I'm not going to back away from it because he has given me the opportunity. And I think um, I'm blessed to have had all these opportunities, you know, and without them, I would not be able to be here this morning. So I want to tell you that, look out, I'm going to give you some highlights as it relates to my presentation today, because I think the world needs to have the information. And just remember, always remember, only your best is good enough. And each time I do a presentation, I reflect on it. And even give those people who have asked me to give um, the presentation, I give them a detailed feedback regarding my feel of the audience and, of course, where they need to go. My thing is a comprehensive feedback is always essential for organizations to grow. So I'm going to be taking it off now. I'm going to go to that shop across the road. So I need to shut the camera off and I'm going to be heading over to that location at this point. Yes, I went into the store and saw all these delicious delicacies and ordered a coffee and a scone. 
yes and this was on the east side of course manhattan many people say it's expensive but when it came it was wonderful and of course a cup of coffee there it is i'm showing you and you know the cost it was six dollars and ten cent in florida i could not get this for six dollars and ten cent where i could have a seat and just take in the wonderful delicious scone florida prices are up indeed Here you can see those big high-rise buildings above the place. There we are. Look at it. It's looking good, right? Yeah, it's looking good with all these buildings taking place. Yeah, I bought these streets in roughly 1995, as I said. It was a turning point in my life when I decided, you know what? There had to be something that I could make as it relates to getting myself on track to do things that I wanted to do. So important to set goals and just showing you the site again as it relates to New York. The concrete jungle, as they say, it will make or break you. And it's no joke. I remember coming to New York and being told I wasn't qualified for certain things. And someone, I said, how is it I'm not qualified? And I was about to walk out and this black woman called me back in and said, you need to stop walking with that big portfolio that you're carrying with your evidence. They are intimidated. Hey, I'm just looking at that. Look, just look at the view over there. Look. See the view? Yeah. Hey, look, that's New York City. Right there. Looking through top of the building. Yeah, these classrooms are smart indeed. As you can see, just doing a little 360. Yep, that's what's happening here. About to get ready to my to my little talk, and of course it's going to be interesting. Yep, no connection. Think I'm having a pointer problem, so I'm just going to check out what's happening. Which you can see, they're getting ready for the session. In the background there, there's music playing, calypso music. man excellent educator yes he has been doing a lot of work he's from trinidad has been in the united states for some time you know it's always good to meet caribbean people to really extend certain things because there's so much to gain from the interactions and i'm happy that i i'm here just meeting him alone as a trinidadian i realized that we have so much that we can connect with and I want to be talking to him some more. So I'm going back to him after. I'm going to go back to him after this. All right. So let us see what's happening here. Let me see. I must say thanks for the organizers for inviting me. Education Solutions International. They have made a commitment to the Caribbean to ensure that they educate and provide the Caribbean with the best sort of knowledge and research relating to advancing, of course, the Caribbean region kudos to this group so it's quite fitting that when they asked me to give a presentation i accepted after all giving back to the caribbean and beyond is important to me so my topic was artificial intelligence and educational inclusivity for school leaders and of course that took place in march of 2024 i have been blessed to produce content for a variety of groups and presentations so therefore, I could not give this one up. The aim of this presentation was basically to get educators from the Caribbean to look at inclusive education in the realm of AI, to understand their role as it relates to inclusive education using AI technologies, and for them to explore where AI is going, of course. Because we have to understand that while we stop at the point of assessment, AI continues to grow. And I wanted them also to explore the ethical implications for AI. If they understand, then they can guide their teachers and, of course, other leaders to empower their staff members, of course, to use AI responsibly. And, of course, when we talk about empowerment, there must be some strategies that we talk about. And I wanted to touch on some of these principles that will guide the empowerment of teachers. That is fundamental. 
without motivation, individuals would not be empowered to use AI. We should never assume that everyone knows about AI and the tools. Now, I also shared a very important experience to establish the need for ethical considerations as it relates to AI. I'm not going to go through that because this is not the presentation, but an overview. And that story, real life story, brought home some critical points that we must consider in the deployment of AI. When we try to operationalize the term inclusion, we have to consider various elements. We now have AI, so we have to expand our thoughts. And I saw an interesting example at UNESCO a few weeks ago. And some definitions of, of course, inclusion just requires a person to be in the classroom. But you take another level. James is enjoying the class. Of course, he's enjoying his classroom experience. And of course, James thrives with instructions in the inclusive classroom. You know, he's there, he's participating. But then when you look at the overall arching concept of inclusion, is that the school uses all the aspects that they have and provides an inclusive learning experience. Now, if you add artificial intelligence to that, we can see that James is in the classroom supported by AI. And the final one is that the school uses AI to foster an inclusive learning environment for everyone. So everyone is included. So the four elements I thought was so important. And just think about artificial intelligence, coping and helping inclusion achieve its ideological assumption to some extent. And I say some extent based on my ideological position as it relates to inclusion too. So I think those are wonderful examples. And I wanted also to empower individuals to think carefully of how do they support staff. You have to provide adequate training and support. You have to encourage them to experiment. I've experimented on so many technological tools over the past six or seven years. And don't underestimate their concerns. Give thought and consideration to their concerns. You have to communicate the benefits of AI too, because I think that's important. And it is important to involve teachers in your decision-making process. This is just a section of my presentation. I'm not going to give all the presentation in this one, because I think it's worthy to consider some points that I've made. But if you do want a full presentation or so, I think you might just want to book me at some point to give a talk to your organization or your school teachers as it relates to topics that I have addressed in the past and continue to address. So there is it. I urge you to follow me as I continue to produce content and of course take you on global trips wherever I go to address topics, to give you critical thoughts, but I will always continue to share. I just love sharing. Remember to subscribe if you have not done so. I look forward to your comments and thanks for just watching. Yes, it means a lot.